Hi, so as I build machine learning models, I want to host them somewhere so that they're usable. So I don't want to spend much money because I don't have much money. I'm more of a hobbyist than actually doing this for commercial gain. But machine learning models are pretty big. Uh, the machine learning model I worked on most recently that I wanted to host was uh, ResNet 152, which is a 152 layer model. And it takes about a, a gigabyte to host that. And so hosting a gigabyte in memory in the cloud or anywhere else is gonna cost money. Um, with AWS, um, it's basically gonna cost around 34 US cents per hour. And so that adds up to hundreds of dollars per month or several thousand per year. And that's not the kind of money I wanna spend on something that I'm just using, doing for fun and I just wanna make sure that I can host it, get it out there, and people can play with it. And also, I want to host lots of models. I want to try different things, host them, and I don't want to spend any money. So how do I do that um, in a cost-effective way? So one way I found was to use AWS Lambda. So Lambda on AWS is basically what we call serverless. So there are servers, it's just you don't own the servers and every time a request comes into the website basically you get the resources of that server for a brief moment of time and it serves the request in this case it would be run the machine learning model and then when the response comes back often your machine your use of that server will go away if you're hitting the if you're hitting AWS Lambda a lot with the same request, then obviously the back end on AWS's side is going to be caching your server. So the first request is often slow in this situation, and then after that, it becomes more responsive. So with this setup, um, so let's go back here a little bit. So I basically started um, looking for a solution here and came across this blog post. Um, pay as you go machine learning inference on AWS Lambda and yeah this basically explains it so AWS Lambda is a great way to host your your model unfortunately AWS Lambda has like a hard limit on 250 megabytes for your application artifact size so basically what that is is, is if you build a model then your model um, when you persist that is going to be a certain size of memory and then you've got to put that on disk. So how big that disk is, is how big your artifact size is. And there's very few models now that are gonna fit under that 256 megabytes, especially if you're doing like image recognition and some larger like ResNet models. So this blog post basically says there's, there's two ways to solve this. You can either store your model in Amazon S3 and then when the Lambda function starts up, it can then pull in your model from, from S3. But unfortunately that's, one, it's very slow to be pulling it across from S3 every time. And also, every time you pull that model across, you're gonna be paying the cost of transferring that, that data. So each request could potentially cost you several gigabytes in transfer costs, which is gonna add up and not end up saving you money. Um, so the solution they recommend after that is basically using uh, Amazon Elastic File System. Um, and with Amazon, everything is called Elastic. So this is basically a file system that can grow and shrink. Um, and you can attach these file systems to your AWS Lambda. And the file, these file systems can be any size you want. So it could be several terabytes. So you could easily fit many, many models. And when your ADBS Lambda function comes up, or if you have lots of ADBS Lambda functions, they can decide which, which things they want to load off the disk. Um, and it could be many different models. So, so you can see here, I've got ADBS Gateway set up. And basically what this is, it's, it's kind of like a proxy service. So there needs to be something listening on, on your domain name, which I've got API dogedreams.ai. Um, so you need something there to receive the requests and basically handle those requests and then pass them onto AWS Lambda. So I've got this set up 
and you can see here it's basically going to go to the path ML Doge Detector, which is the model I'm working on, and then it'll take a post request, HTTP post request, and then it'll basically send that onto the onto the Lambda function, which you can see is is down here. So this is kind of the the most complex part of the system is setting up this API gateway, uh, and then you can see here's my Lambda function here. So we can we can take a look at this this lambda function. So I basically got the the app that comes up, and when that loads up, let me make this a little bit bigger. When it loads up, it's gonna see what model it needs to load. It's gonna load that. It's using joblib, so it's basically I run the model, get it in memory, and then basically persist that to disk as joblib. It's basically taking it and saving it as a blob. And so I can load that that up from disk uh, and then I have my model. So then I have the usual things. I wanna transform the inputs. Um, and then this is at the core of what I, I'm using. It uses a Lambda handler. Um, and then if we go down here, I've got a function called handle predict. It takes the payload. Um, it turns the images into um, tensors. And then it basically passes the, the tensors through the model and then gets the predictions about what class it is. So in this case, my prediction is, is it a doge meme? Um, so. If you're not familiar, Doge is, is a meme on the internet. You see lots of them on Twitter or Reddit. Um, and so I've basically taken these memes and I'm trying to detect, is this a, me a Doge meme or is this not a Doge meme? I deploy that on AWS Lambda. I got my API gateway. It's pointing at this. So this is uh, the site I set up. So this is the, the site I've built at dogedreams.ai. So that's the host name um, and then API dogedreams.ai is the backend host name, so that's where my model is, and the API gateway is listening, and then passing on to the AWS Lambda. So we can basically drop in images here, so we can just drop in like one image, um, and so this is actually a, a, a doge image, it's just been transformed, so maybe the model is detecting the eye or the, the text looks kind of familiar. Um, some simpler ones, try this one. So yeah, and then uh, let's try some ones that aren't actually doge memes. So yeah, no doge there. Uh, we, can, we can send off a few. So yeah, this one it doesn't think is a doge meme. It's, Picture of dog. It's kind of close to a Doge meme. No Doge there, but it, it thinks this one is a is a Doge meme. Um, we got some pictures of, of dingoes. So when I was building the model, at first I found dingoes um, were quite commonly detected as Doge memes. So that's basically me hosting a model. Um, and so let's talk about some of the downsides to this. So one of the downsides is that. Um, So that's basically me hosting a model, but what are some of the downsides to this? So one of the downsides is that, um, so one of the downsides is that the model needs to be loaded up. Um, and the way AWS Lambda works is that if I'm not sending a request to it, then there's nothing on AWS Lambda. So, which is good because I'm not paying for it. But then the first request comes in after a long while and AWS Lambda kind of needs to wake up. It needs to load in my, my data and load up my model. And sometimes that can take, at the moment, this takes about 10 seconds for that first request. So you can see here when I, when I load the model, I've got this progress bar. So that's one way I'm, I'm getting around that delay, giving that visual indication that something is happening, but I don't know how long it's gonna to take to load in the backend, so I just got it 
kind of like it speeds up and then eventually it just jumps to 100. If we take a look at what else is happening, we look at the network here. So when I reload this page, one of the requests you're going to see is this wake request. And so what this wake request is doing um, is basically just sending a request to the Lambda function. And if we go back and look at the Lambda function, you'll be able to see this. So all it's doing is very simply calling this handle wake and it's returning woke equals true, which you can see there in that response, woke equals true. And that will happen when I load the page. So every time I load the page, it's gonna hit that, that wake request and it's gonna return woke equals true. So you can see that that's, happens pretty quickly. But if no one had been using the, the website, then that would take a little bit of time. Uh, up to 10 seconds, just the same as it would take to load the model. Because if you look at the code, when this file loads, it's actually loading, loading the model in line. So even though I'm calling just woke and it's returning woke, even though I'm calling wake and it's returning woke equals true, it's still loading the model. But the benefit of that is that when you come to this website, it calls wake it sends off that request in the background, that request for waking up might take 10 seconds because it's loading the model. But then the next request, when I finally find an image I want to send, it's already loaded the model and then cache that on AWS's backend. So the next request that goes to AWS Lambda will be much quicker and it will only take a second. So while the first request can take 10 seconds, you can get around that with basically little tricks like when I load the page, I'm gonna hit AWS Lambda and say, hey, wake up, someone's gonna be sending a request soon. And once it's cached, generally it stays in memory for a while. There's no guarantee of like how AWS will handle caching your AWS Lambda function, but it's in their benefit to try and cache that so they're not taking the hit on their end. So let's take a look at what this is gonna cost. So basically if we calculate 30,000 requests taking 10 seconds each and using a gigabyte of memory, then that is going to cost me five dollars a month but i've done these calculations without the free tier discounts so the free tier basically i can do a lot of these requests and pay pay nothing um, but if you want to scale this up and you want to you know, have lots of models and you very soon get out of the free tier then this is this is more realistic of what that's going to cost once it scales um, these is ten thousand milliseconds that's basically accounting for the first kind of what I call the cold start. So that wake request um, will be 10 seconds, or if they send off a request very quickly, usually the first request in a batch of requests is gonna take 10 seconds, after that it will take one second. So if it only took one second, then you could times the number of requests by, by 10. It's pretty cost effective. I'm using a one gigabyte here for my model but you could use up to um, 10 gigabytes. The downside of using bigger and bigger models is that that loading off the disk into memory, that first request is gonna take longer and longer. So if my one gigabyte model takes 10 seconds, maybe a two gigabyte model would take 20 seconds. I haven't tested it to see if that is linear. And as you get into like 20 seconds, 30 seconds, that kind of wake up function Kind of breaks down a little bit because it's unlikely that someone will come to your website and they'll be just doing nothing for 20 30 seconds 10 seconds that's understandable that they come to the website they need to figure out what they're doing and then they need to take a picture or upload a picture um, that can take 10 seconds but probably not 20 seconds so that is probably the biggest downside as you get into bigger models we can have a look at my my billing So what do we got here? So my forecast for this month is $3.85. And I think that it's in Canadian dollars. Um, and we can look at the daily. So per day, spending five cents. So I'm spending five cents on AWS. That is including this API gateway setup, AWS Lambda, Route 53. Um, I'm also using it for email 
actually why don't we go into my terraform setup here so i'm basically using terraform for building all of this infrastructure so when i build infrastructure i rarely add anything via the aws like console um, i write it all in code and then build it that way that way everything stays in code and i can with one command delete everything yeah you can see my api gateway here i have i have my aws lambda set up and then i got my root 53 the vpc is all the networking and then i have set up for um, the front end code so when you go to the this website uh dogedreams.ai um, hosted by cloudfront which is another aws service it's um a cdn which means it's fast from anywhere in the world and then that's backed by s3 so i have that set up for the front end um, and that's all managed by terraform yeah i mean if you're interested in terraform i recommend using terraform cloud so this is my terraform cloud setup um, basically it points at my github on my github here i have this repo that I had here in um, IntelliJ. Basically, Terraform Cloud watches all of these directories, and if it sees something that's changed, it'll run a job, and then it will build build that. It will deploy AWS infrastructure. So my Lambda function in this directory changed. So I added a, a debug environment variable. It built and deployed that onto AWS Lambda, and then API Gateway said, "Okay, I need to make a deployment for this." So then it triggered that. And then basically you can come in here and click. You can see the plan about what it's gonna change. I won't, I won't get into, into this in this, but if you're interested more in Terraform Cloud, then I can recommend it. I'm using a free account here, so this is costing me nothing. The biggest costs I have is if I fire up an EC2 instance, my process, if I update the model is basically fire up an, an Amazon EC2 machine, go onto that machine, uh, attach the EFS volume, install dependencies, install the code, run a script that's gonna build the model and persist the model as a job lib and put it on the ESF, EFS volume so that the code from the AWS, AWS Lambda can load up, load that job lib and then start serving requests. That process of getting the job lib and the libraries and all the dependencies on the EFS volume. Um, it's still a manual process for me. I haven't figured out a quick way to do that. And just generally this, this whole process is like very complex. So I'm hoping at some point I'll have um, a follow up video to this with um, some ideas on how I'm doing continuous deployment of my models um, using this setup or if I completely change this setup to something else. Um, I've also been looking at uh, Google Cloud Platform um, just because I think their cloud functions enable you to use bigger models without all this complexity about it attaching a, an elastic file system. Yeah. That's how I'm uh, serving my models on uh, AWS Lambda serverless for pretty much free right now. Um, and so yeah, if you've got any questions, leave questions down below. Give me a thumbs up if you like the video and uh, yeah, subscribe if you're interested in seeing more videos like this and let me know what kind of videos I should be making. Okay, thanks. Bye-bye.